Ooh, a bit out of breath. It's been a while since I've done this. Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a 60s glam kind of look. This look, as you can see, is kind of more of a wearable 60s theme. It's based on a Star Trek character that my mother is actually cosplaying as, a Kanutu woman. So she loves everything Star Trek, so hopefully there's a few Trekkies here watching this video. So hopefully this is helpful for all of you going to the convention in, I think it's Birmingham. Yeah, hopefully, you, as you can see, this is more of a wearable kind of 60s look if you wanted to go for something that would have been worn in Star Trek as well. So it's just featuring like a more glowy kind of skin, natural skin, um, bronzy with a nude glossy lip, which is quite up to date actually, but as you can probably tell from the pictures I'm going to put up on the screen, she is wearing a nude glossy lip, which is very ahead of its time, as much as the rest of Star Trek was very ahead of its time. And I'll talk you through like all of the trends that were in the 60s that might translate to you now and also how this particular look may deviate a little bit from the traditional 60s glam. So continue watching if you want to see how I got this fun, flirty, but kind of up-to-date 60s look with the fluffy lashes and glowing skin. Okay, so I'm just going to make this tutorial as simple as possible and try and eliminate a few steps. So I'm not going to prime the skin, I'm actually going to use a liquid highlight um, just underneath the foundation to make sure it's nice and glowy because as you can see she's got quite dewy skin so I'm using the um, Hello Halo Mega Glow by Wet n Wild in Gilded Glow so it's kind of just like a champagne -y gold kind of colour to make your skin look dewy um, actually obviously the highlight goes here but we're going to pop some here because when you have naturally glowing skin this tends to be the place that seems to be more dewy and then on the chin as well maybe a little bit on the forehead on the high points of the cheekbones and then just sort of blend it down put some on the nose as well just down the center on the temples here top of the forehead if you imagine having greasy skin that's where you should be putting it because obviously we're not going to be leaving it like this we're going to be putting some coverage on top so don't worry if it does look a bit like you have greasy skin that's kind of the effect that we're going for next you want to take a dewy foundation i'm going for milani conceal and perfect so I was always a sponge kind of girl, but recently I've been finding that a nice dense foundation brush is far quicker for just brushing on the foundation. So we want to take it right up under the eyes and also on the eyelids too. We're kind of going to use it for like an eyelid primer as well. Again, eliminating steps. Obviously, I know people will be using this tutorial for 60s parties or or Star Trek parties or um, the convention so I know that I won't be able to actually transport much of the makeup or you might be in a hurry after work to get to the party so I'm just eliminating some steps to make it a bit easier so it's more of a peachy colour for the blush I'm going to go for Coralista um, this is my Benefit Cheek Leaders Bronze Squad Palette but we want to mainly focus on the bronzer so I'm going to use Hoola Original Bronzer from Benefit and also Hoola Caramel. So I'm first starting with a dense angled brush with the original Hoola and I'm going to pop that just at the back of my cheekbones here. Make sure that it doesn't blend down too far. You want the blending to be above that line. In the 60s we tend to see more like angular faces if that makes sense. So I'm just taking it down my jawline as well, just a very small amount of the bronzer because we don't want it to look too orange down here and I'm not using a contour and shade which would be much cooler and create the effect of a snatched jawline but it kind of works the same with a little bit of bronzer so as you can see it just makes my jaw look a little bit less round <laughs> just building up the intensity on those high points I'm taking it a bit around the forehead too just it has a very bronzed nose as well so I'm going to take a little bit just down the sides not a full brush load so with a fluffier brush um, I don't actually have mine on me but I'm just going to use the same brush but I usually use a fluffier brush I'm just going to take a bit of the Hoola Caramel which is a nice warm kind of biscuity colour just here small amount of that one because I'm very pale at the moment um, and I'm just going to intensify that bronzer around the tops of the cheekbones like where the sun hits 
bronzer was kind of used as a type of blusher if that makes sense but I'm then gonna additionally sort of like pack on some Coralista which is more of a apricot toned blush towards the apples and then blend it back but maintaining that dewiness as well because Coralista has a little bit of shimmer in it now in terms of concealer we want to go a little bit of a lighter shade um, because she has sort of highlighted the high points of the face here in more of a triangle form under the eye and this is where your sponge comes in or you can just use your brush to blend out but very very lightly because we don't want to take over the blush on the face so we don't want to take it over the bronzer on the nose and then you want to take any translucent powder to set underneath the eyes if you do get more oily skin or you're going to an event where you're going to be sweating a lot it might be nice as well to set the forehead the nose around the nose by the, where the makeup tends to melt off um, personally on your skin you can be the judge of where it needs to be set next we're going to move on to the eyebrows now in the 60s the brow trends were kind of one end of the spectrum or the other so for Audrey Hepburn it was so it was a nice thick brow with a little bit of an arch um, on the top but not on the bottom so it was more of a straight brow on the bottom um, but really thick and to get this effect I feel like a powder would be better for this look today I'm actually going to do a bit more of an angled thinner brow just because of the model that we're trying to replicate but we're still going to be using powder because I think it's the easiest thing to work with it's the most natural effect and it's also going to give you more of a 60s brow effect as well I've got a little bit of a bald patch where there's no hair there not no hair but very little hair there so I'm kind of just going in the top line and the bottom line to where I want my brow to start as you can see and then just following the natural shape of the brow and not making it any thicker once you've filled in your brow shape to where the hair is you can start playing with the shape so if we elongate towards the arch and make this part a little bit harsher we can get a bit more of an angled brow now out of force of habit I am going to be putting on some brow gel on top I'm going to go for the Gimme Brow in shade 4 because it's going to make my brow hairs a little bit darker powder tends to last a decent amount of time especially on a wet base but if you are worried about the longevity of it you can use a Gimme Brow like I have or any brow gel or you can use a clear brow gel like the 24 hour brow set from Benefit this tends to last really really long so I'm just going to add a bit more security by putting that on top too so next we're going to move on to the eyes and I'm going to need to like look at the picture a little bit more because this is the most important part she's got kind of a silvery thing going on but it's not like traditional 60s where you have like the eyeliner in more of a vertical flick rather than like an outwards flick like we're used to and like a, a really defined crease she's just kind of got like a soft pearlescent thing going on you can see in the shots where her head's tilted back a little bit more that she doesn't really have a defined crease so it's going to be a super easy look to do. I'm taking some single shadows from Anastasia that I've kind of custom made into a little palette. I think mostly what we're going to be using is the pearlescent colour. So I'm tempted to also use a kind of bone colour. So I'm taking the Huda Beauty Morph Obsessions and taking that bone colour up on the brow bone. On the rest of that lid we're going to be taking that pink shimmer shade and you want to blend it towards that brow bone. But not go all the way up because we do want that matte bone colour to show. Since she has a bit more of a deep set eye than myself, I'm also going to be taking a light brown colour in the crease. You can just take your bronzer if you think that's going to work as well. Where the bone kind of is here, you want to wiggle it in there as well. Just to make the appearance of a more rounded eye. In the 60s I feel like the idea was to make your eyes look more round. So in some scenes her black liner seems to be more of a liquid whereas in others it looks a bit more smudged out so you can kind of go with whatever is easiest. If you have a liquid liner use that otherwise you can just use a pencil um, but make sure it's a waterproof one because otherwise it's just going to smudge into your crease which is not the effect that we need. So her eyeliner goes quite thick. I'm going to use my NYX Epic Ink eyeliner pen I find that a pen is much easier to use, but you can use like a brush or whatever you're more experienced in. So it starts quite thin on the inner corner. And it gets a bit thicker. Keep it the same width all the way across. 
and then what we can do is make it a bit thicker towards the outer corner once we've done the wing. If anything, her wing comes out a little bit more from her eye, just there. And in keeping with the 60 theme, we want to kind of flick it a little bit upwards. Don't take it too far up, maybe like a third of the way to your eyebrow. And then take it back towards the line. So with the 60s, they kind of like to continue the line down around the eye, again to make the eye look more round, naturally. Um, what I'm going to use instead of liquid liner is just pencil liner or you can use a black eyeshadow on a very thin brush because we want this line to be super thin. So we're continuing the liner from here but we're not going on the waterline because we want the eyes to look big. We want to stop about here because we again want to keep the eye open in the inner corner. I'm using the Bad Girl Bang liner by the way which has a smudging tool on the other side. So I'm just going to smudge sideways but not downwards so that it's less harsh. And can you see how that makes the eye look a bit rounder and more 60s? So her eyes are more of an almondy shape but mine are a bit rounder so it's going to look a bit different on my eye shape and it might look a bit different on yours as well. Um, but it is in keeping with the style so I'm going to opt to stick with the style and not try to make my eye shape look a little bit different. I don't know why but hers still look almondy with her 60s <laughs> makeup on. But with the lashes it should help to give that effect as well because we're not going for a traditional 60s lash again um, that is longer in or thicker in the middle which makes the eye look rounder we're actually going to go for one that is thicker on the end that makes the eye look a bit more cat eye so it's going to sort of balance it in the other direction before i do that i'm going to pop some nude in my waterline to make my eyes look a bit bigger you don't have to do that if it's not a step that you think is necessary for the look it just cancels out any redness and makes the eye look a bit bigger and more awake next you want to go for a super dark uh, thickening mascara so something that's going to give you a lot of volume um, I'm using the bad girl bang by benefit so if you have a much lighter mascara I'll go ahead and put that on the bottom lashes um, because her ones don't seem to be that defined which is again quite odd for the era of the 60s where they used to have quite full and separated lower lashes like Twiggy so what I'm going to do is just press my current mascara into the um, the roots of the lashes on the bottom and not drag downwards because then my lashes tend to start looking quite long and we don't really want that necessarily for this look. If you wanted to go for more of a twiggy look then go ham on the bottom lashes and even add a few individuals. Last but not least for the eyes is the lashes. I'm going to go for the Demi Wispies because they're a bit tapered on the end but they're still quite full in the middle. So we're getting the best of both worlds where the 60s effect where it's like thick all around and then the middle looks a bit more emphasised and then the whole eye looks circular and also the effect that she has in which the end is a lot more thick. So I thought I'd just include how I apply my lashes in this video just in case there are a few beginners out there who aren't as um, experienced with it. What I'm going to do is my lashes are already trimmed because I'm going to be wearing them. But what you want to do is trim your lashes to the size of your eye. So you want to measure it up against your eye and make sure that it's starting not all the way into the inner corner but a little bit along here where your natural lashes would start and ending just at the end here. We don't want to go any further than that because otherwise the lash is going to start bending around the eye and it will sort of drag the eye down. So we want to trim from the outer corner of the lash always which is usually the longer part of it. This will be the outer corner and this will be the inner corner. You want to trim from the outer corner and take off that little section there. If your eye is bigger um, then just use them as the outfit but mine are teeny. So I'm going to take my duo glue. Mine's a brush on I just find that easier. Yours could be a little squeezy tube. What I'm going to do is put it on the back of my hand. This is a good technique for if you have squeezy glue as well. So I'm putting it on my hand instead like this and then I'm just going to drag my trimmed lash through. Only on the lash band it's quite hard to show you. So it's coating the lash band as you can see and then with most glues unless it's quick dry you want to leave it to dry a little bit to go tacky before you pop it on your eye. So my technique would be to place it where you want in the centre then I'm going to stick it down on the inner corner and then I'm going to drag the outer corner to where I want it to ultimately sit. No worries if it's looking crazy right now we are going to just sort of squish them with our lashes once the glue has dried and then what you can do is just close around tap it in to the lash line I'm going to take the bit that I actually trimmed off this bit here 
and I'm going to stick that on the outer corner. You can get a similar effect by literally just getting ones that are a bit thicker on the ends, like the Eyelaw Enchanted line. This, these ones are an Oops a Daisy, I think. They're just a bit thicker on the ends. So for the lips, she's kind of got more of a cinnamon kind of colour on her lips, but I'm going to go for just like a true pinky nude called Tartiest uh, Lip Pencil in the later ground, but you can pick any pink. Overlining wasn't really a thing in the 60s, unless it was to emphasise the cupid's bow. So for the actual lip colour, I'm actually going to mix a few colours. I've got kind of brownie, um, more on the yellow spectrum, kind of um, nude lipstick. Uh, NYX Liquid Suede in Sandstorm. So I'm going to dab a little bit of that on there. And then towards the centre of the lips it is a little bit lighter. So I'm going to use the Tarte the Lip Architect Lipstick and Liner in Muse. So you don't have to faff around with all these different colours if you've literally just got a nude lipstick. Just pop it on. But if you do have a bit of a darker, more browny lip liner, not completely brown, but like nude brown, so nearer to your skin tone brown, then do use that. Oh, and that oh. So I'm going to put on the Fenty Beauty Fenty Glow Lip Gloss. And then you can go ahead and put a little bit of highlight towards the backs of the cheekbones and blend it down to here to make it look a bit more dewy. Or you can use a dewy setting mist. I'm going to use the Pixi Glow Mist. So I hope this was useful for all you Star Trek fans out there going to the convention in November and um, anyone who just wanted a quick 60s sort of vibe for a party or if you just like wearing a 60s look on a day to day basis or for a night out. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Um, please like and subscribe to see my other looks. I did do a 50s look as well a while back. I'll link that one below or at the end of the video. I also have my Facebook, Twitter and Instagram handles down below. I do a few IGTV videos um, if you wanted to have a look at those as well. I do a lot of graphic liner looks, glitter looks, cut creases, natural makeup, just a bunch of different stuff. So do have a scroll through my channel and also on my Instagram as well if you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe for updates as well and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.